This is the ultimate beginner's guide for the Aura Ring 4. This is my ring finger, by the way. <laughs> crazy people. I'm gonna go through all the things that you need to know from using the ring, charging it, how to wear it, to the actual app, how it all works, the things that you need to go through in the menus to understand that data, and how this ring could potentially change your life. If you're thinking about buying one, links are down below. If you click that link, it helps support the channel so we can keep making videos like this. Or you can also go to Best Buy. That doesn't support the channel, but it's a faster way to get it. Make sure you get the right size ring. I have a video on all the different colors. Chapter markers for everything are linked down below. Let's get into the video. Now, how to charge your ring. The Aura Ring comes with a charger that looks like this. It's a charging pad and it only works for your size. It might, you might be able to charge your ring on a ring charger that's one size smaller, but it's never gonna work up and it won't work for ones that are drastically different. And there are notches here to help you line up the ring. You can't put the ring on unless it's in the proper position. Boom, slides right on. This light will turn on to activate the charging sequence. What you do wanna do is get a charger plug it in with their USB-C cable that comes in. Thank you Aura for doing USB-C to USB-C. This is the charging pad. You can put this by your bedside. One thing I do wish, which I'll show you in a second, is Aura copied Samsung and Rincon, which is a charging box. This charging box has juice in it and I can close it. The ring can charge in my backpack. I can toss it around. It's totally fine. Great for travel. Aura needs to build one of these because then I can just pop the ring out, we're good to go. It tells me how much percentage it has on the actual pad itself. But Aura gave us this, if I put the ring on, I toss this in my backpack, boom, the ring will fall off. But you wanna put the charging ring on, you got the light here to denote how much charge it has, and then it plugs in via USB-C, you can use any USB-C cable. And in terms of wattage, it takes about two watts of power, as you can see that right there. Um, and that's how you charge the ring, it's pretty easy, leave it on your nightstand. I prefer to charge it when it hits the 20%, you don't want it to go too low. You have battery degradation. And after about two years, maybe even more, if you don't properly charge your ring, your ring's battery lifespan will go from like seven, eight days to like two days. <laughs> and you have to replace the ring, buy a new ring. So I just recommend have good charging habits. Don't let the battery die all the way. Charge it at 20%. And if you really wanna be crazy, do 20 to 80%. <laughs> Keep it within those bounds to have the best long-term battery life. Now, how to wear the ring. So you wanna wear the ring on ideally your pointer or your middle finger. These are the two best rings to wear it on. You could also do your ring finger as well. Ideally not your pinky or thumb. Find the ring size that best fits that. Your rings, your fingers I should say, are going to change size. So throughout the day, depending on nutrition, hydration. So I found that the 14 fits best on my pointer finger and I like wearing it here. There is a little bit of wiggle room, but if you want the best accuracy, you wanna have the least amount of wiggle room where it's snug, but not too tight. And you want to have the notch on the bottom that will get you the best accuracy. The new Aura Ring 4 has no bumps. So you won't be able to tell where the ring is if you feel the inside. But on the outside, I usually try to feel with my eyes closed and be like, there's the notch, it's on the bottom. And that will just get you the best accuracy data. The looser it is, the more likely it is to move around when you're grabbing things. But that's the best case scenario. You can swap it around on different fingers. It doesn't matter as long as it fits that ring. My left hand is thinner in terms of thickness than my right hand. So I wear it on my right hand. Now that you figured out how to charge it, how to wear it, how does the app work? Let's jump into all the data and the overview of the app. So we pull up the Aura Ring app here. You're gonna get the Aura logo right at the beginning. And this is the home screen. It's updated since my last beginner's guide, if you wanna watch that to see how much it's changed. But now the dashboard is drastically different. You have all your scores at the top. Ring, why is it not connecting? Readiness, sleep, activity, heart rate, live heart rate, and then stress, which is a new feature. You can go ahead and see any activities that were detected and you can go ahead and say, hey, that was accurate, next, whatever that is, you can go through and do that. Um, I, I usually ignore these, I don't really care too much about it. I can see my total step count or calorie burn for the day. You can change these based on what you like. I put it to the maximum, I wish it went higher. You can hide calories, which I did do that. And then you can scroll down, see daytime stress, your heart rate. If you tap this heart, it'll actually measure your heart rate. Just keep your finger still. And then a timeline. If you tap more, you can see your cardiovascular age, your heart health, which I think it gives you like a VO2 max score. Mine says high of 45. My Apple Watch and Garmin are closer to 50. I have inactive time, my readiness score, my sleep score, resilience, body clock, how well I'm sleeping, my bedtime, explore, timeline, and then what's new, symptom radar. And all that information is on your homepage. And then you have menu options on the bottom. Look, it shows my heart rate live. Vitals, which will go into your big three scores as well as some extra scores. And then my health, which is more trends over time, as well as a variety of reports. So. When it comes to the app, that's where you can process most of the information. When you wake up, I typically open the app, I sync the data. If you haven't synced it in a while, it might take some time to load in the morning, so just leave it open. And do not let these scores impact how you decide how you feel. Let how you feel decide, and let the data be just another helpful, valuable point. Big three scores. 
So I'm gonna tap vitals here, and I'm gonna be able to start with readiness. That's kind of like, how quote unquote ready are you for the day? Uh, we have resting heart rate, heart rate variability, body temperature, respiratory rate. I love looking at these four numbers because they have been vetted to be the most accurate on the aura ring. So if I'm trying to understand, hey, am I out of my bounds? I will look at this for the most part, like on this day. I'm way out of my bounds. What happened there? I don't know. For the most part, I was pretty consistent. I don't look at the small variations, only large changes. Body temperature, same thing. Like right here, what happened here? October 26th, maybe alcohol. Respiratory rate. When I got COVID, there was a massive spike. We look at large variations, not small changes. That's interesting to know. Readiness score overall. I can see all the different contributors to that. And if I don't understand why it's optimal, good, or fair, you can tap in to see that information. And then Another thing is heart rate and heart rate variability graphs. At the, and you have a summary at the top of this readiness score section here, and you can hide all those detailed numbers or you can see that information if you'd like. That is the first one of the big three. The next big three is sleep. If I scroll down, you can see our sleep. I can tap the arrow to see more. I can see my bedtime, my wake time, total sleep, time in bed, sleep stages, average oxygen saturation, and I can go ahead and tap sleep to see all that information in more detail. This used to be easier to see on the page because you could actually tap on the bottom here, but they took these menus away in the newest app update. So it's just a couple more taps to get in. I guess they're creating friction to see all your data in detail, making it easier to just get high level scores, which I personally am not the biggest fan of. I wish I could just have a dashboard of like total sleep, you know, certain things that I can customize that are most important to me. I can see time in bed, see trends over time with time in bed by tapping on that specific number. Once I get into the contributors, if you tap on that, you can see why it's a contributor, how it contributes, how it affects your sleep score, and it'll give you insights and feedback. Hey, did you know that you could actually fall asleep too fast? Like your latency was very low. Must I must've been very tired last night, as well as all my sleep data once again. That is my sleep, the second of the big three. And the last of the big three is activity. So if I scroll down activity goal, I try to wear the, my ring most of the time during the day, but I only wear it all night. If I'm working out like weightlifting or grabbing anything where I don't want to have the ring there kind of blocking whatever I'm grabbing, I'll take the ring off running. I'll sometimes wear it, but here it'll show you kind of how many steps I did my walking equivalency, my movement throughout the day, pretty simple, nothing crazy, but it can give you a somewhat decent benchmark on did you get your 10,000 steps for the day? which I do like, but I don't look into this as detailed as possible. There is activity tracking, which we'll dive into later. Now there are two extras, which is daytime heart rate and daytime stress. When you scroll down, you'll see this information, daytime heart rate. It gives you a graph of all your daytime heart rate. You can tap and scroll across it. There's restorative time where you seem to be relaxed. Stress, which is the amount of your body felt high stress. Sleeping, which is your heart rate throughout the night. And then if you want to see the big three plus these five pieces of information any other way, like other dates, I can tap on the date at the top and now I can actually scroll through. Crowns means achievement, success, you are king, queen. And I can see my recovery, my sleeps data all from that day. I think that's so crazy that I can go that far back just to see all of my aura data. That's an easy way to jump around the graph to see information. You can also swipe left to go through the dates. They swipe at the top there. So there's two different ways to kind of go into the past for that. But there's also trends. So at my health tab, if you scroll all the way down, there are reports, all reports. Now you can have weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, and anniversary experiments. So let's go anniversary. I'm gonna do the five years, six months. There's gonna be a full report on how my sleep steps and overall data right here. That's insane. I've had this ring for five years and six months. We can do quarterly. I can get these cool reports where I can see how much I slept, my wake and sleep times, my chronotype, my daily habits, and how they affected my scores. Whoa, 412 hours of inactive time. I need to move more, huh? How many crowns I got for that quarter. So all that information is there. If we do weekly, we get these weekly graphs, which used to be in the old app and now they're hidden within these trends, which can be helpful to understand, hey, how this week did I do better or worse than last week? It's good to just see these insights. And if there's certain behaviors you're trying to do more of, sleep more, walk more, these graphs are helpful to be like, hey, did I do it? Am I keeping myself accountable or is it just in my head? So that's why I like wearables. It can hold you accountable to the goals that you're doing as long as you're measuring in that direction. That's the reports tab. And inside of my health, there are a couple more sections that we'll go through. So at the top, you can see here, resilience. So this is kind of my stress resilience score. You do have to wear your ring, I think for seven days to get this data during the daytime. So just make sure you do that as a map of like, are you low stress, high recovery, high stress, low recovery. And I can scroll back the days to see that changes over the days. The trends, this is also through the days. We can swipe through, looks like I was solid. And then recently it's been adequate. So <laughs> my resilience has been declining. And the factors that contribute to that score, 
guidance and tips. Maybe I need to get reduced bright lights at night, mental rest, breathing exercises. If I wanna open up daytime stress to understand what is stressing me out potentially, this can be helpful to help drive that behavior change by understanding that data better. That's a new feature that came out. And the second one is cardiovascular age, which is VO2 max. It says, hey, you're high, you're excellent. If I looked at it here, it says, I'm kind of increased or decreased a little bit, going strong for six weeks. I thought I was in the 50 range. I need to do more of the actual testing to make sure these numbers are right, but it does show a lower number than my Apple Watch. I just need to do the walking test. Use the phone GPS on your phone and get that data. And then it shows you like, how will climbing five flights of stairs feel in 10 years? Like effortless or manageable? I need to change my life to stay within the effortless range. You know, you wanna be able to go up the stairs, put your suitcase up there. I can see all my data right here. These things are imported from HealthKit too. I can add VO2 max data as well if I take a test. That's in that tab. And then there's also more weekly guidance and tips. So there's a lot of education pieces inside of the app to help drive behavior change. The last section is sleep health. We have sleep regularity, which for me is good. I probably could be better, it was fair. And I think at one point, how's it changed over the years? It was good and now it's good. <laughs> so not much, doing okay. I can see all my activity tags. My chronotype is a late morning type. I like to wake up around 6.49 a.m. So not an early bird, but a late morning. And that's the My Health section. If you tap info, you can see all the different information about it. I can see my date of birth, my weight, my height, my sex assigned at birth, the goals, and all this information that I can also change within the settings tab. So let's go into the settings tab, which is the hamburger on the top left section. If you tap that, there are a whole bunch of settings that you can change from my order ring, seeing your trends, your reports, experiments, circles, the rest mode if you're sick, understanding the heart health data, turning blood oxygen sensing on and off, going into deeper settings, or Labs, which is new features that are up and coming in beta releases, integrations with things like Strava, Natural Cycles, and other things, as well as Refer a Friend. You can give them 10% off. I do have links down below if you click that, it helps support the channel. And this is where you can monitor all those setting changes. So let's go through a couple big important ones. My Aura Ring. Now, if you lose your Aura Ring, you can have your latest location in the app. I actually found that the Aura Ring uses my location way too much. Whenever I scroll down here, it's just like, Aura is using your location. I'm like, why is Aura using my location? So personally, I actually go ahead and go to apps. I don't think Aura has done a good job of tracking my location just the right amount. So I'll come here and I'll say while using app. And then I also go into the settings and I'll turn off location tracking. But if you do that, you will lose this. But this is a great way if you lose your ring often to just have the last known location. I can go to settings, location permissions, or location features. That will also turn off any kind of GPS tracking in outdoor workouts too. But it'll burn less of my battery. And the other way to get to that is also tap the aura ring on the top right. I can see my battery percentage where I'm at if you want to maintain good battery behavior. That information is there. And then a share button here where I can actually share images, which is kind of cool, resting heart rate. I can post the Strava if I want with different aura stickers. We'll talk about the Strava integration soon. Now, going back to the menu. Trends, we talked about that. You can tap in and see the trends for each section. Reports, I can go into that, see the weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, anniversary, and my experiments, which we just talked about that. And then circles, this is kind of a social thing. I have a circle with my health house friends, my personal family, and a couple other groups. And here I can see scores from all my friends, you know, their sleep activity for either the last day, the last, Matt, he's not wearing his ring, what's going on? Omar, he's not wearing, he lost his ring actually. Oh, he lost his membership. But it's cool to see everyone's information, how often they wear their ring, and then you can even see my scores. This creates a little bit of a social aspect, but it's kind of hard to get to. I can give JC a little bit of a, hey, nice job. So it does take some time to get to that. I don't use that because it's so deep into the app that it's just not easily accessible. I wish their social features were just better. Explore has a bunch of education and things that you can play, breathing exercises, nice, but never use that. Rest mode, if you're sick and you wanna turn on rest mode, I do this, if I'm sick, it'll also ask you if it knows that you're sick, hey, do you wanna turn on rest mode? So sometimes I don't even need to go in that part of the app. Heart health, which we talked about, VO2 max, cardiovascular age, blood oxygen sensing this is a feature that you can turn on and off. I keep it on, it kills your battery a little bit faster, turn it off if your battery dies. Or a labs, this is where you can test new things like the Aura Advisor, which is kind of like an AI, it gives me recommendations. Meals, I know that they Aura actually acquired Very, which is a CGM company, and Dexcom, another CGM company, invested in them. So I think there's gonna be a lot of nutrition, glucose monitor tracking coming soon to the Aura Ring. I'm very excited for that. Aura, if you want me to test all this stuff out before it comes out, please let me know. I'm very excited to see how sleep is gonna integrate with all of that. 
Settings, notifications, I love to turn off activity, bedtime, and insight. I'll keep inactivity and battery on. I just want to minimize notifications, get the basic necessities. Woman's health, if you're a female, you can use woman's health, pregnancy insights, and getting started. Just note that this information is on the Aura servers. So if you are worried about certain privacy aspects, just be careful about that. But it'll use body temperature and cycle tracking for pregnancy insights. I'll talk about natural cycle integration as well. So if you go to app integrations, Actually, I don't have natural cycles, but my friend has natural cycles. I got her an aura ring, so that way you can either plan a pregnancy or prevent a pregnancy. This one is set to preventing a pregnancy. We can see their different their cycle count. There's a calendar here to see their red days and then the green days, which is you don't need to use protection according to natural cycles app. If you want to take ovulation tests, you also can. There's different trackers inside of the graph that you can track as well. And then definitions around what each of these things mean, your fertility status, the period, so there's a lot of good education and learning that I've personally learned about females and how the you know ovulation cycle works and period tracking. So that's been interesting to learn more about. If you want an updated natural cycles video, please let me know in the comments below. Activity, you can turn on activity heart rate, calorie opt out, ways to back up all your data. I have the lifetime membership because I got the Aura Range 2, I think, and I upgraded and they gave me a lifetime membership. And then here I can turn on integration with Apple Health. So I connect to health and all of my ordering data like sleep and all that will get sent to Apple Health. App integrations, I have Strava turned on so I can actually publish my workouts to Strava. So I just did an outdoor walk and I'll show you. It sends it to my Strava account. It says my steps goal achieved the total distance. It's using GPS data from my iPhone and then heart rate data from the Aura Ring. So if you are a runner, walker, cycler, you can use your Aura Ring for Strava data and not have to buy another watch. But you do have to start stop the activities on the ring, which I'll show you later. Let's talk about starting an activity, tracking activity workouts. On the bottom right, there is a plus sign. This is your action button. You tap that. There's the Aura Advisor, which will give me insights, coaching, and I can ask it questions. It's like a little AI. I have unguided sessions where if I want to meditate and just track my heart rate and heart rate variability, I can do that. Add tags if I want to add a certain tag for today. So that way I can see trends over time. I wish they would automatically add tags or just make the experience easier. You can add an activity that happened in the past. There are a long list of activities here from dance and all these things. You can add the time and it'll create kind of like, a, oh, how much did that activity impact your day from a moderate? And then it'll say like, oh, how was the intensity? It's not tracking your heart rate live when you do that, but it just adds that activity to the app. But then there is a record workout heart rate, which I think is neat. You only get five options, running, cycling, and walking, indoor, outdoor. And the outdoor ones and walking will use your phone's GPS if that is active. I just turned it off. And then when you scroll down, you can see I did walking. I'll tap that. Track with Aura. You can see my heart rate that was tracked with Aura. What heart rate zones I was in. And also a map. Actually, I did it wrong. So I had to walk again because I turned it off. But this is the GPS from my phone. But then the heart rate data from the Aura ring. And that's just an easy way to track your workouts. If you don't track it, it'll actually pop up here and say, hey, did you hike? And I can be like, yeah, I did. I can confirm yesterday's activities, like maybe I walked at this time and say confirm, and it'll just input that data. It tracks your heart rate less often when you do it that way, but if you want constant live heart rate data, you can track your heart rate data actively by pressing plus, starting it, and stopping it. Next, one thing I didn't talk about is the Apple Watch app. So there is an Apple Watch app for the Aura Ring. I almost never use this. It feels absolutely unnecessary. You do have to sync the Aura Ring to your phone. Once that is done, then you can pull up the Aura Ring app on your Apple Watch and I can see my three scores. I can tap into like sleep and see more detailed data like my total sleep. So all that information is accessible on my watch, but I don't know how necessary it is considering I have to open up my phone, view this data, then I have to open up the watch. It's like, I don't, I want it to be directly syncing to my watch, which it doesn't do that. But hey, Maybe in the future, I don't have to carry my phone. I can just sync the Aura Ring to my Apple Watch. That'd be really nice. Now, when it comes to price, the Aura Ring is $349 for the base color and it goes up to $499. And then there is a $599 subscription every month. The first month is free. After that, you gotta keep paying it, which is not ideal. I don't like that you have to pay for the product and a subscription. Like there needs to be extreme value for you to do that. I am in the lifetime, so it makes it easier for me. But if you are interested, I do think the Aura Ring is one of my favorite rings. Please click the link down in the description below if you do plan to buy it, help support the channel. If you wanna see more in this guide for next year, let me know. Aura, if you wanna sponsor next year's guide, let me know. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.